Good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad that we're in. It is so good to see you. Uh, get some folks some time to log on. And uh, we will go and get this thing started. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you. Come on in. Amen. Come on, join us. We're going to talk about a few things here today. Good morning, Sister Davis and Facebook user, whoever that is. Good morning. Give folks a few minutes, jump on. We'll get started. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on in, come on in. Let's keep it going. Amen. It's good to see you. Be a part of what we're doing here today. All right, good morning, Tammy. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Smith. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. All right, we got uh, about two minutes or so. And, um, We will we will get started. Amen. About about two more minutes. We'll sit and just talk about uh mismanaging the moment. Amen. Yeah, about another minute. We'll get started, amen. Tag someone, let them know that we are. Uh, doing this, we're in the process, getting this done, making it happen. Amen. Good morning. Got another Facebook user. Thank you for jumping on. Amen. About another minute, and we will get started. Eleven oh five, we'll get started. We won't be here long today. Just want to talk about uh, mismanaging. Don't mismanage uh, the moment. Amen. Amen. Don't mismanage the moment. So, all right, let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this opportunity to come and speak to your people, God. And we thank you so much for the time that we're going to spend together. God, I pray as we just continue to discover who we are, that we will. Uh, know when and how to manage our environment and we do not mismanage the moment we thank you for this time that we're going to spend with you in jesus name we pray amen amen don't mismanage the moment in in each of our lives there will there's always um opportunity uh for us to uh there will be opportunity for us to come about and do some of the things we want to do, be who we want to be, work on things we want to work on. Um, There will always be uh, an opportunity for you to shine, to reach your goal or 
for you to be in a pivotal moment where you have to make uh, pivotal decisions about things and how we make those decisions um, uh, often determine uh, the outcome of uh, the decision or the outcome of the event. Uh, some of it could be for, uh, the outcome could be lasting over some generations. So we got to be careful how we uh, manage our environment and don't mismanage the moment. So let's let's look at Rehoboam, Solomon's son, 1 Kings chapter 12. Rehoboam succeeded Solomon as king. And uh, by this time, Solomon had put a heavy tax on the people. The burden was, was extremely difficult for them. <clears throat> and... Um, so uh, when Rehoboam began to uh, begin to reign as king, uh, some of the people, you know, they, you know, they came to him and say, "Hey, um, you know, your father put a heavy yoke up on us by now, but now lighten, lighten the harsh labor and heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you." This is what the people said to them. We will serve you. Rehoboam, you know, responded to those folk and, and said, um, go away for three days and then come back. And uh, come back to me. So the people, so the people went away. It says, then, then Rehoboam consulted with the elders. You know, he said, who, who has served or who had served his father? He said, uh, during Solomon's lifetime, he said, how would you advise me to answer these people? And um, they replied, well, if today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will be always be your servant. Rehoboam, uh, it said he rejected the advice of the elders and gave elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him um, and were serving him. And it says he asked them the same question. And they said, listen, man, uh, the young men said, uh, who had grown up with him said, these people have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make your make our yoke lighter. Now tell them my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scoured you with a whip. I will scour you with scorpions. And I'm going to stop right there. So what happened was Rehoboam had an opportunity to manage the moment. In the moment, he had an opportunity to make a good decision um, about where and how he uh, would proceed. And what he did, he mismanaged the moment. He rejected the, the, the advice of the elders who came to him and said, listen, um, lighten his load. But he listened to his little fellows that he grew up with, those who were young and brash and had their own agendas, and told him, make it heavier. We, we, we can get paid. So he mismanaged the moment. And because he mismanaged the moment, he because he mismanaged the moment, the entire kingdom split. This is when, this is how you ended up with 10 tribes in the north and two tribes in the south. This is how you ended up with Judah and Benjamin in the south. Rehoboam mismanaged the moment. See, he had a choice. And in managing your moment, and when you're managing your moment, you have to make a decision. But here's the thing. You got to look, good morning, you got to look and see what the long-term effect and the long-term outcome would be of the decision you make. How many of us know that people mismanage moments all the time? Businesses go out, uh, uh, corporations go out of business because people mismanage the moment. Uh, Eastern Airline mismanaged the moment and they went out of business. Blockbuster mismanaged the moment and they went out of business. Okay, there are churches and people and things and people you know who've mismanaged their moment and they've gone out of business. Why? Because they did not manage the moment correctly. Do you get that? Okay, what it is in life, you cannot mismanage it. 
If you mismanage your medicine, you can either take too much or not enough, and it can have a long-term effect. If you mismanage your money, you can either have more money than you got money. Uh, mismanaging your money can cause you to make decisions that are not prudent, but you got to learn to manage that thing. Okay, as we manage our environment, you don't want to mismanage the moment within the environment because each moment has consequences. And if you mismanage enough of those moments, then you can miss out. Those who have their own business, you know that there's a season, there's a time, there are things you have to do, there are places you have to go, there are things you have to make sure that are in line so that when the opportunity comes for you to shine and for you to be elevated and for you to move to the next level, you don't mismanage that. Amen. So, so you really, really have to uh, make sure you don't mismanage your moments. So we know that there are uh, mismanaged moments in marriages, relationships, job, uh, medical, uh, physical. If you mismanage the moment, you can have long-term consequences that can affect generations or your family or who you are for generations to come. So, you know, th that's what I wanted to drop on you today about managing your environment, that we don't mismanage the moments that arrive in our environment. This is why Ecclesiastes uh, tells us that, okay? So we'll meet back on, on uh, uh, Wednesday. We'll continue to talk about managing your moment or mismanaging your moment. You can also keep, pick me up on uh, my Facebook page as well. Um, you know, if you if you miss out on this one, um, it's uh, on my Facebook page. You follow Pastor Bell, you'll find this uh, also the segment there. So I thank God for, for you. God bless you as you go through today. Uh, this the today that you don't mismanage those key moments. God bless you. Until we meet again, uh, I look forward to seeing you uh, again later. All right. Don't mismanage the moment. God bless you.